Well, again, want to welcome you to today's call. And let me tell you, our trainer today is, is none other than Christian Sadler. What a fantastic individual he is to meet and to get to know. He is a co-founder of Team Elevate. We're grateful for all that he does for us. He's a nationally renowned leader in Renatus. He's a successful land developer, fix and flipper, and real estate investor. And most of all, he is someone who will not allow someone to tell him, you can't do that. Uh, he he's a guy that has learned how to turn winning into a way of life. And this morning he's here with us to share how we can incorporate that into our lives. Good morning, Christian. How are you? I'm great, Ron. How are you this morning? Fantastic. I'm glad you're here. Awesome. Well, I'm glad to be here and uh, excited to be chatting with you folks today. So Ron, I first want to thank you for everything that you've done and everything that, uh, you continue to do to help this team grow. We're, we're truly appreciated, appreciative of uh, all of your uh, contribution. And folks, when Ron reached out to me yesterday and just said, hey, what, uh, what's your topic for tomorrow? The first thing that just, just came out of my head was how to win. And then I started really thinking about, um, you know, what that training looks like. And uh, I, I had this, this whole thought process come through my mind that I want to share with you guys. So let me go ahead and share my screen and we will go from there. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can uh, stop everybody's video and make sure everybody is muted um, so that we can do that. So let me just quickly go through. If you guys can do it for yourselves, that's even better for me because then I don't have to worry too much about it. Looks like mute. All right, I think I got most of you. So let's do this. Let's jump into the uh, the whiteboard here, and let me share my screen. All right, so here's what here's what this thought process was that came across my mind, folks. It's an interesting thing about us humans, right? We all know that uh, there's so many people out there in this world that they will spend more time planning their vacations than they will planning their life, right? And uh, also, here's what I've, I've figured out. People will spend more, uh, put more attention, attention on a game than they will on their business. So what do I mean by that? Well, let me just move some of this stuff out of the way so that I can use this whole whiteboard. Erase this. All right. So today we are talking about how to win. So what are some of the games that you guys could think of? Think in the top of your head. What are some of the games that people play? Uh, and maybe it's easier to relate this to uh, your children's games. So Little League, right? Uh, T-ball, you know, you're playing uh, basketball. You know, maybe here in Utah, they call it junior jazz, right? And if you were going to put your kid into uh, the opportunity to play and you wanted them to win, what are the steps that you would go through? So um, if you guys want to chat in, you guys can, can help me along with this, but let's just think about this because I've, I've already got a lot of it. Just uh, I've been thinking through this all last night and this morning of how this relates to our business. So what would be the first thing you would do if you decided that you were one, you would pay your so I wasn't able
Christian, looks like we've lost audio on this. Oh, here, I'm not sure what happened. Can you guys hear me now? Sounds great, Christian. Not sure what was happening there. Uh, kind of weird. Let's see. All these chats are just about not being able to hear me. I should have great internet service where I'm at. I mean, I'm at my house. I'm set up in a spot where I'm pretty close to the router. So I don't know if there was just a time out there, but hopefully we're back into it now. So I'm going to repeat what I just said twice already uh, to myself. Now to you guys, so you'll be able to hear me. All right. So when thinking about how to win, what's the first thing you would do if you put your kid into Little League or, you know, football or any of those things? You would pay your dues. That's the first thing you do is you sign up and you pay your dues. And I was one of those kids where, for me, sometimes it wasn't in the budget, right? And my mom never dropped me off at practice uh, with, you know, with some random team and just said, hey, go play with these guys. Uh, I haven't paid your dues, but it shouldn't be any big deal, right? Instead, she had to explain to me, sorry, like, we can't play. And the only way that those organizations are able to continue to uh, host the tournaments and everything that they have is that if everybody pays their dues. And so if you, I mean, people will go drop, you know, a thousand dollars on putting their, their uh, kid into a sport, but they're not spending the $50 a month to put their business in the game. So just think of it that way you got to put your business in the game in the first place. And so there's a lot of things that we're implementing where your participation is going to be limited by your choice to pay your dues, right? Because that's the first thing uh, in order to keep any organization running is you got to pay your dues. Now, what is the second thing that you would do? You're, you know, you're wanting, you're wanting your kid to win. Let's think of your business and your kid as similar entities, right? So what's the, what's the second thing that you would do after you paid your dues, right? You signed up, you paid your dues. Next thing you're going to do is what? Well, you're going to go out there and you're going to get your gear, right? With almost every sport, there are certain things that you need to buy in order to play the game. So football, for example, you've got to go get the, the pads, you know, you've got to get your jersey, you got to get the cleats, you got to get all of those things. And it's the same thing in this business. If you want to put your baby business, or let's not call it a baby business, let's call it a kid business. If you want to put your business, which is a child right now, that you're wanting to rear into a, you know, a professional player, the next thing you're going to do is you're going to go get the gear. So what are those things? You're going to make sure that you have, uh, a computer, right? You got to be able to enter orders. You got to be able to do those things. You're going to go and you're going to, uh, you're going to get your leads. So there's lots of different ways to do it, right? Kind of like, uh, you know, there's maybe different kinds of socks you can get, different types of cleats you can get. Well, it's the same thing here, but one way or another, you're going to go out there and you're going to get the gear. And again, I see so many people that they'll spend, you know, $1,500 on a ski pass for the year, but they're afraid to spend $200 on some roadside signs. They're afraid to spend $100 a week on a KSL ad, right? You've got to get your gear. So this is just getting real, right? Hopefully you guys are relating this. If you're spending more attention on your kid getting into sports than you are your business getting into profit, there might be a disconnect there. And I'm not saying take away from your kids. I'm saying make sure that you treat your business with the same type of respect. All right. So the next thing, you, so the first thing you do is you would pay your dues, right? Second thing you would do is you would get your gear. What is the third thing that you would do for your kid? What would the third thing that you would make sure that they did? Well, you would show up to practice right? Now, I want you to think about this because you guys, you guys all know somebody in the business that doesn't pay their dues. So, you already know. 
They're not taking their business serious. You know some people that they pay their dues, but they don't have their gear. They're constantly talking about how they don't have that first step. They don't have those, those first necessities. You know, you gotta go get a suit, right? You gotta, you gotta dress sharp for your meetings. You gotta, you, know, you gotta do all those things. So second thing is you got your gear. Now the third thing is practice. And how many people do you know that don't even show up to practice? Or if they do, they don't take it seriously, right? We see this, uh, we, we see this all the time with people that, you know, uh, they don't show up on Thursday night, right? They haven't been to a Super Saturday in months. And then all of a sudden they give you a call and say, hey, can you help me with this resource? It's like, uh, you want me to refer you a money lender and I haven't seen you in six months? How do I know you're going to pay them back? How do I know who you are? <laughs> like, who are you? What have you been doing here? If you, if you had your kid ready to play the game, but he never showed up to practice, do you think that the coach is going to grab him from the bench and say, put this kid in? No. I mean, in the entitled society that we live in today, there are some parents that would actually throw a fit and say, my kid showed up, you should put him in the game. And I disagree, right? Because if that kid has not showed up to practice, then he's not going to be the best chance at winning. He's not going to be there to be the best chance of helping that team win. And we're talking about how to win, right? So if all of those kids paid their dues, they got their gear, and they showed up to practice, what would be the next thing that they would do? I want you guys to think about it for yourself for a minute. They would have a plan. Right? They would have a game plan. I mean, even in you know, the, 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 the lowest age group of kids, the coach comes into it with a plan. Am I right? They have plays. So if you're paying your dues, if you've got your gear, you're showing up every Thursday to practice, with your suit on, but you don't, you don't have a plan, how likely are you to execute? I relate this to the type of person who, um, they're doing the practice, meaning they're making the phone calls, and they're inviting people out to the presentation. But then when the people get there, they don't know what to say to them next. So after the presentation, they're going up to them and they're saying things like, well, what did you think? Oh, how did you feel about all that? Folks, that's not in the plan, right? Because if you go to somebody after a presentation and say, how do you think? They move to their analytical mind and they start telling you what they found wrong with the presentation. If you go to them and say, how do you feel about this? Then they go to their feeling part. And guess what they go to? They go to the negative side. What didn't feel right? So what do you say? What is your game plan when you get somebody there on a Thursday night? Afterwards, you go up to them. And most of you know this already. You're probably already starting to chat it in there. What do you say? You say, what did you like best? Right? Because that is the game plan. Because if you say, what do you like best, right? That's the same way of having a game plan to corner their quarterback into one place where you guys can all tackle them. Now, I'm not saying you're tackling your prospect. You're just tackling their objections, right? You're actually pushing their objections out of the way because when you say, what did you like best, there's no room for objections. And so you just got to the point of what do they like best? And then in that plan, what are you going to do? You're going to talk about what they said they liked, right? Don't deviate from the plan. All right. So 
you're, you're going to pay your dues, get your gear, you're going to practice, you're going to have a plan, and throughout all of this, you're also going to listen to your coach. You're going to listen to your coach. So you guys have the opportunity here with us in, uh, in Renatus where you've got lots of coaches, right? And it's you that has to actually listen to the things that are being said. Because here's one thing that I've noticed. I mean, I have been to hundreds of Super Saturdays. Yes, you heard that right. I have been to hundreds, hundreds of Super Saturdays, okay? I've been to Super Saturdays in multiple different states. I've been to Super Saturdays with multiple different teams. I've been to, to uh, Super Saturdays with hundreds of different uh, trainers and instructors. And guess what? Guess what? The message is all the same. I mean, don't get me wrong. Every, every trainer has their own way of training uh, and saying different things, but it's all the same information. Find the people, tell the story, build for events, follow up, right? So you, if you're getting in the game, if you get your business in the game, you're going to pay your dues, you're going to get your gear, you're going to practice, you're going to have a plan, you're going to listen to your coach, right? And then you're going to, um, and what's the easiest way to put this? when you're saying you're gonna utilize your team members, right? You're gonna work as a team. You're going to co-operate, right? If you wanna win, especially in a team sport, but you think that you have to have the ball at every minute, guess what? You don't win, right? So there's a whole lot of people on your team within this business. And what I've learned is when I use the team members who have certain strengths, I win. I win over and over again. And so I'll give you an example. I just had a, uh, a prospect out in the Seattle area and she had been to a presentation um, and there was a little bit of a language disconnect. Uh, I just, I wasn't able to understand her as well as I would have liked and I was doing my best. And so, you know what I did? I called Shelly. Shelly Hearman uh, is also Filipino. And guess what? She helped me with the phone call. She actually helped this, uh, this lady to see the opportunity for what it was when I was having difficulty from a language barrier, right? I've done this same thing in real estate. Right? In real estate, when I've had a tenant that, that maybe speaks Spanish and uh, you know, I'm, I'm having a hard time communicating, what do I do? I call somebody like Dan Conley. I call somebody like Ryan Black. And I say, hey, is there any way that I could, uh, I could call you in on an audible on this thing? Right? Help me make this phone call. What if you simply leveraged the team members that you had and match them up to the opponents that you have, right? The opponent is the objections, not the prospect. But guess what? If you've got a six foot four wide receiver, right? And you want to block those objections of, of having them catch your ball, are you going to put a five foot four uh, defender on them? Absolutely not. So for example, right, if you've got somebody who is, um, comes down to the, the, the meeting and they're already successful in business and you decide as you're doing a follow-up with them that you're going to do a three-way phone call, who are you going to call? Are you going to call the person who is has never had a job and who is looking at this as their first time business and their, their mother got them started? No. That's a great person on your team, but they're not necessarily the person that you want to cover that receiver. 
right? Instead, you're going to call somebody like, um, uh, like, uh, my mind is going blank with names here. Oh, Robert and Deslin O'Dell. So Robert and Des, right? They were already successful in business. They were already successful in real estate. So you're going to get them on the phone and you're going to have them talk about why they would get started. Right? You're going to call somebody like a Gene Powers, right? Gene Powers was already making $400,000 a year when she decided to call off of a roadside sign on the side of the road. And she's now successful in this business. And she has her freedom back. So you're going to... Pay your dues, get your gear, practice, cooperate, or have a plan, cooperate, and six, execute. Execute. You got to take that action. You just got to do it. You know what to do already. Every single person on this line, you know what to do. You know what your next step is. My question to you is why are you still asking questions when you could be taking action? Take action. You know what to do. Because guess what? After six, where, what happens? You just go right back here. You go back to practice. You move and have a plan. You cooperate with your team and with the plan. You execute. And then you start practicing again right? You continually listen to your coach. I hope this was helpful for all of you guys. I hope you guys, it, this is a wake up call for some of you. And I hope for the rest of you, it's just a good way of thinking about your business, right? If your business was your kid and you wanted it to win, what would you do? You would take these steps. You would listen to your coach. You would practice. In fact, you might go above and beyond and even get extra training outside of your team. Folks, I have spent many tens of thousands of dollars to get specialized coaches to help me excel in life. Don't be afraid to invest in yourself. I've got one chat in here. Sandra, thank you so much. Folks, it's a beautiful Thursday. Get out there and make it happen. Appreciate you being on here.